Hello and welcome to the Friday, January 19th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got yet another update about the event to connect secure vulnerabilities. Well, we now have a blog post by Rapid7 that goes into quite a bit of details of the product, what the exact nature of the vulnerability is and how to exploit it. With this, we have fairly straightforward to execute exploits available for everybody willing to give them a try. And we certainly do start seeing some specific scans that match the patterns suggested by Rapid7. The root cause of the problem is a directory traversal vulnerability. That part is trivial to exploit. Essentially, only the first part of the path is actually being used for access control. You have to find a path that you have access to. There are a couple that do not require any kind of uh, access control and that way you're able to then essentially just append the path that you actually would like to execute if you find one that allows code execution well then you have your full remote code execution exploit and that's what rapid 7 explains in its uh, blog post now there's a good news side to the story rapid 7 confirmed that the XML configuration update that Ivanti published does prevent the directory traversal exploit. So uh, that should help you out. Of course, the dense of remote code execution and such uh, would still work, but you would need to authenticate to actually execute that. The final patch should become available starting on January 22nd. They're talking about some staggered rollout of the patch. So uh, be ready for that uh, once it's being released if you're still using Ivanti. Connect Secure VPN is not the only product that Ivanti sells. They also make the Endpoint Manager mobile or EPMM and mobile iron core device management software. Well, a patch was released for those products back in August and uh, the exploit for this vulnerability is now also actively being used. And CISA added the vulnerability into its list of known exploited vulnerabilities. And a good reminder from Amos Wenger uh, via Twitter that it's a bad idea to leave your databases exposed to the world unprotected, apparently accidentally by starting up a Docker container, not realizing that when you're exposing a post, you're actually exposing it globally, not just on loopback. The database was compromised within a couple seconds or minutes. Now, in this case, it was a Postgres database, and uh, what happened then was that the attacker deleted the data and replaced it with a sort of a ransom note. Of course, there was no real ransom here because the data was deleted. I've seen stuff like this a lot with MongoDB and such where attackers just would delete data and leave a ransom note behind, hoping that the victim is dumb enough to still pay. And then we do have a proof of concept and a quite detailed write-up about CVE 2023-35636. There's an Outlook vulnerability that Microsoft patched in December as part of its Patch Tuesday. This is one of those vulnerabilities where you trick Windows systems to connect to a file share and in doing so windows systems will typically send credentials along often in the weak form of ntlm hashes which then could be brute force could be relayed so uh, that's why this particular vulnerability was quite the problem as before in outlook uh, there is a special header involved that you're using to set the url in this particular case it's the x sharing config url header that has to point to the malicious uh, file share and then you also need to add a content class sharing header in order to make the sharing config url work Exploitation seems pretty straightforward. Again, lots of more details in the Veronis blog about the vulnerability. I think overall, your best bet for all of these vulnerabilities, and we had sort of a lot of these 
in an unintended uh, file sharing vulnerabilities is to block outbound port 445 and any other file sharing related ports. Remember that uh, later versions of Windows are now also allowing you to enable file sharing over UDP port 445 via quick. So uh, definitely, you know, block these outbound traffics. In particular, once it's quick, of course, there is very little that you can do to inspect the traffic. And lately, well, feel sometimes like sort of just a bearer of bad news with all these Avanti and Citrix and other vulnerabilities. So just want to point out that you know not everything is bad on the internet. There are some great products out there without big uh, booths at uh, conferences. And the reason I don't talk about them uh, quite often is, well, because they're just good. They just do what they're supposed to do. Security Onion just released an update. Great new features, no critical security vulnerabilities in that update, which is why I usually don't mention it. Troy Hunt, another uh, great uh, person here, sort of contributing to our all's safety, has added another few million password hashes to his Have I Been Pwned site. So it's not all bad. Just uh, look sometimes a little bit at the smaller products, smaller sites, and away from the center of uh, the sh- floor at these conferences to really find the companies and individuals who actually make a difference. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.